I'd like to turn to Daniel Richards to talk about the container market. So, Daniel, welcome to the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. Thank you for having us on, Marcus. Oh, again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Could you, firstly, just tell our listeners about the outlook for the container market in 2023 in terms of demand and supply? It's worth recounting what's happened over the past several years, where really you had a period of quite volatile demand growth, where there was this initial sharp fall in demand for containerized goods towards the start of the pandemic in 2020. That was followed by a very strong rebound over the course of 2021, As people shifted their spending into goods, people received stimulus payments, uh, housing markets were strong, etc. And that's been followed so far in 2022 by what's been a surprisingly weak trade growth environment, certainly in the latter half of the year. So it's been a volatile period for the container trade growth and quite a weak one in the past several quarters. That's been playing out against what's been a fairly unremarkable period for container ship supply growth. The fleet has continued to grow at, say, a 3 to 4% year-over-year growth rate. And what's really made the difference is just, as you've seen in other shipping sectors, in particular dry bulk, the fleet has been unable to perform as efficiently as it normally would do so. So you've seen a, a pretty sizable loss of effective capacity over the period coinciding with the pandemic, and that's now also beginning to unwind. So when we're looking forward to 2023, you have these three different elements. So what's trade growth expected to be? How fast will the size of the fleet grow? And how will those issues around congestion, around fleet efficiency, how will those develop? On the trade growth front, the you know the very near-term outlook earlier in 2023 remains pretty weak. You still have an overbuild of inventory that companies are having to look at. You're seeing major pressure on housing markets because of the rise in interest rates worldwide. And you are still seeing pressure on consumer disposable incomes at the same time as consumers now have a wider range of services and things to spend their money on. So the trade growth outlook, at least for the first half of 2023, is going to be pretty challenging. It's possible that you know the, the, the scale of the demand destruction and loss of trade in the past couple of months has been so extreme that it's possible that when you get to the period after you know the factories shut down for Lunar New Year in China, there could be something of a rebound. But we're not seeing the signals yet that there's going to be a significant improvement in trade growth next year. And we don't have a firm reason to expect a very strong trade growth environment over the sort of medium term forecast horizon. What's the kind of immovable big object coming down the line for container market balances is supply growth is going to accelerate markedly. So our projections have you know, the size of the fleet as of the end of the year growing by around 7% year over year in both 2023 and 2024, and then above average growth again in 2025. And if anything, you know, that 7% number for 2023 and 2024 could prove an underestimate. Uh, we've got quite a bit of order book slippage in the subsequent years. We're expecting a high volume of scrapping. If that scrapping doesn't take place on the scale that we're currently forecasting, you know, fleet growth could accelerate up towards 10% year over year, which is a huge amount for an industry that's quite mature in its demand side to absorb. So in 2023 as a whole, it's going to be a period where supply growth really does begin to outpace demand growth, unless something completely unforeseen happens on the macro side. And it's going to be a challenging couple of years in terms of absorbing the current order book. Okay, so you've obviously got that big supply side coming in at a time when the market itself has been softening. I think one of the things that we've been following and a lot of other people has been this dramatic drop in the spot container freight rate. So what's going to happen then with the contract rates in the coming year as those come up for renewal? The current signals are pretty negative, I'd say, for the line of companies. You know, in their key three results, a lot of the lines still manage to grow their average dollar per TU freight rates on a quarter to quarter basis, which was perhaps somewhat surprising given that we're already turning down then. 
But if you look at some of the broad metrics of global average freight rates, um, Zanita published some container trade statistics, published a good broad global metric. Those are now definitely showing signs that contract rates are beginning to fall, and especially for new contracts being signed. Now, a high proportion of contracts will come up for renewal in the first half of next year. And it's clear that the lines are going into that renewal season not on a great footing. Blank sailings aren't yet proving to be as effective a tool as they were in the early stages of the pandemic. So where the spot rates have led, it's likely the contract rates will, will follow. It will obviously differ across different shipping lines depending on their geographic focus, how much weight they put on spot versus contract business in the first place. But you know, I think our base case position is that contract rates aren't an average dollar per TU freight rates. They're unlikely to go all the way back to what you'd see in a, in a weak market in the pre-pandemic environment. But unless something happens quite dramatic with lines being able to stop the falling spot rates, we know the pace of decrease has slowed a lot in the past couple of weeks. If they can engineer some kind of rebound in the freight market in the first quarters of 2023, then that will put them in a stronger position with respect to contract rates. But it seems that the average dollar per TU freight rates are going quite a long way down towards normal, and that will play out by the, say, middle of next year. Okay, so that's you know, sort of six months um, sort of scenario for that to play out. If you look at those Q3 earnings on the lines, they're still really spectacular. When is this going to impact onto the earnings of the lines? It will vary enormously. I think that's the first thing that you'll see is that different lines are going to experience the next several quarters in quite different ways. So lines that have a particular focus on you know, spot business on the Trans-Pacific, Asia to US trades, they're likely to come under pressure sooner than the sort of bigger or more or the lines which have a more diverse cargo base across different regions. Lines who've seen a stronger proportion of their business moving on contracts, again, that's likely to give their strong period of earnings a bit of longevity compared to smaller lines with a strong focus on the spot market. But as I said, you're looking more towards the middle of next year for the industry as a whole, that earnings picture to begin to look more normal. I wouldn't say it's going to be you know, that grinding process of ultra thin margins that you saw pre pandemic, we're not expecting that necessarily to return. It might for individual liner companies. But again, it's a process that's going to play out over a number of quarters, it's going to take at least a few quarters, we think the average dollar per TU rates to get back down to lower levels, including contract rates. And for now, that's going to be offset, of course, with what's a pretty significant cost base for these lines. So it's a fairly bleak picture overall. You did mention a sort of possible upside there, I think, after the Lunar New Year. You know, is there a position where if lines manage capacity to that well, that perhaps it could boost rates back up again? Yes, that's definitely a possibility. And I think we have to be humble in terms of what we say isn't and isn't possible in container shipping, given the experience of the past several years. You know, fundamentally, the consolidation of the industry, the structure in terms of the alliances and the market power that those lines possess, that's still there. That has been a, a, a certain degree of the strength of markets in the past couple of years and the resilience of the lines has been attributed to that level of you know, structural consolidation in the industry. They still have the ability to black sailings. The question is, are blank sailings good at boosting markets or are they really just a tool to put a floor under rates? The evidence so far is maybe more towards the latter than the former, but yes, there definitely could be a rebound in, in markets. And the other big thing that's going to start changing markets is you know, the environmental regulations coming online. That isn't so much the EEXI regulation that's coming into force in a few weeks' time on the 1st of January. Over time, though, the CII regulations, they are likely to lead to some degree of slowing of the fleet. We think that's likely to be a more multi-year process in terms of how it's enforced, how lines figure out how to calibrate their capacity in response to those regulations and the individual ratings that ships are receiving. 
but definitely there is a prospect of degree of incremental slow steaming over the next several years, and that takes effective capacity out of the market. It's unlikely to be a major factor in the early period of 2023, where it's going to be a question of can trade growth return post the new year, are lines effective in in a targeted manner out of the market. But the upside for the container industry comes from this potential for the environmental regulations and how operators known to respond to those to remove effective capacity from the fleet. Okay, so there's going to be a lot to watch in the coming year, essentially. (laughs) 